Um, hi everyone, there's just a few um, people that are still coming in. So I'll just give it a minute. I can see only a few people in there. Still a few people joining, so just uh, just keep, bear with us for a minute, and uh, just wait until all the attendees are in. All right, we've got quite a few in now, so I think I'll just get a start. Uh, so welcome to the Box Hill Institute Automotive uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Michael Cope. I'm the manager of the automotive um, area here. I look after the automotive department. I look after the engineering area, uh, transport logistics as well. Um, so what we're going to do today is have a little bit of a chat about what Box Hill has to offer in the way of automotive programs. Um, and also I realise that uh, a couple of you may be international students that are looking at coming to do some study here. So I'll just go through a couple of things. Um, just with myself, um, I've been a motor mechanic. I actually started my career here at Box Hill Institute back in the late 80s. Um, I started as an automotive apprentice with the Shell Group and did all my apprenticeship through Box Hill Institute. Um, we were actually located at uh, a Mitcham address in Thornton Crescent at the time. And since then, the workshop has moved here to Elga Road, which is quite a, a large um, you know, sort of workshop. Um, area here, which we'll see shortly in the video. Um, so automotive courses for students. There's a number of different areas that you can go to. There's a number of different careers in the automotive industry. There's a number of different courses that we actually offer um, to students. So, and here, um, even if you're doing a Cert two, which is a pre-apprenticeship, um, there's the opportunity to get your, um, you do your theory side of things, so you get to know the operation of a particular part of the car, whether it be a fuel system or a braking system. And then you get to actually do the hands-on um, stuff as well. So apart from learning on the theory about how the, how the basic operation of the uh, item works, so if it's a braking system, you get to learn how the brakes sort of operate, different types of brakes, disc brakes, drum brakes, um, you know, calipers, all sorts of things like that. And once you know the theory side of things, then we get you into the workshop and you're actually doing some hands-on work um, with, with braking systems. So inspecting, servicing, uh, checking, testing, all that sort of stuff. So um, quite a few things uh, here to do as part of the Box Hill program. Um, we do have a specialised automotive training centre. It is set up like a, an automotive workshop. Um, we do have a group of teachers here that are very passionate in what they do. Some, actually one of the teachers here, Adino, is a past student, is actually a past international student. And uh, many years ago, he did an international uh, Cert 3 and Cert 4 and diploma, went into industry for about 10 years and then come back and now he's teaching. So that's just one of the teachers that we have here. Some of the other teachers here have been here for many years and know the insides of cars, you know, everything, everything to do with cars. So they've been teaching and been around cars for many years. They're all qualified, main mechanics, automotive technicians, 
Um, some have got auto electrical um, backgrounds, some have got transmission backgrounds, and we all sort of work together and uh, get all the areas of the um, of the vehicle covered. Um, Box Hill itself. Um, so the main automotive campus is in Box Hill itself, Algaro campus. Um, there's a big workshop there called Jackson's Automotive Workshop. Um, it, uh, physical size of it, you'll actually see in a video that we're about to play just after this, um, which gives you a bit of a tour of the, of the workshop and the sort of things that we have in there. Um, but we are pretty centrally located. We're on the 109 tram, um, which will take you from Box Hill into the city. We're also on the train line. So very easy to get to via public transport, either on the tram or the train or the bus networks also stopping outside. Um, we have a number of campuses, one in the city, one in Box Hill, one in Lilydale. And but the, the main trades for automotive is in the Box Hill area. And there is a trade area out in Lilydale with a new, um, a new centre being built there, which uh, hopefully will be completed at some stage later next year. Um, so if we just go to the video now, it will give you an idea of how the, um, how the workshop sort of set up. And I'll be back shortly after the video plays. All right, so we're back. Um, that sort of gives you an overview of uh, the workshop area and sort of what's in there. And um, if any of you at any stage are wanting to come and have a tour of the place, just a matter of just giving us a call and organising that, you're quite welcome to come in and have a look through the place. We can give you a tour and explain what you what is required, the sort of work you would be doing and um, yeah, happy to facilitate that. A few things next, uh, what we do, we offer quite a few different courses in automotive. So anything from 
we actually do a vet in schools. Um, so anything from secondary school students come in once a week to do their vocation, they do a certificate too in automotive studies. So they, they learn the basics of the vehicles and how they operate. And they do that over a two year period. And they do that as part of their um, secondary school. The other way to come in is a certificate two in automotive uh, service technology. So this is a pre-apprenticeship. The pre-apprenticeship is there for um, people that are wanting to get into the industry and want the basic knowledge. Um, it gives the students uh, a very good overview of how things operate. With the, um, the, well, the basic operation of the vehicle. So it goes through the inspection, um, how to inspect, how to service things. Uh, it, it doesn't go into the diagnose and repair because that's sort of something that's covered later in the course, but it gives you over the 10 weeks, uh, four days a week, it gives you a, a very good foundation of, of how things operate and will enable you to get your foot in the door with an apprenticeship. So after you've done a certificate two for 10 weeks, then you are quite employable because you have done all of the basics. You know how the basic operation of things work, you know how to, how to check things, um, and you are basically straight away, you're, you're of some sort of value to an automotive workshop. Um, the certificate three is the next step. So this, with the certificate three, you need to be an apprentice to do the certificate. So you need to be signed up to an employer and it goes over three years. Well, the, the apprenticeship is actually over four years, but there's three years of schooling. Um, it is a nationally recognised qualification after that. So you do become a qualified motor mechanic or automotive technician. Um, you have to be either employed directly through an employer or through a GTO. So GTO is a group training organisation. There's quite a few group training organisations around and um, there is uh, a number of different ways to actually get in. So apart from being um, directly employed through, so you go to a Holden dealer or a Ford dealer or, or, or an automotive workshop and you get directly employed, you can actually be employed through one of these group training organisations. The group training organisation are the employer. They are the people that are paying your wage and they put you into a host um, situation. So they put you into a host employer. And that may be you know, a lot of the um, GTOs, the group training organisations have a number of workshops around town and you'll usually be placed at one of those workshops. So you're not, you may be at uh, Venture Gully, Ford or whatever it is, but um, you're actually employed through the group training organisation. Um, the other things we have to offer are the Cert 4 in mechanical diagnosis and the Diploma of Automotive Technology. The Cert 4 and the Diploma are at the moment international programs that we run. Um, but uh, can be available to domestic students. Uh, let me just get to my next thing here. A couple of other things we do. Um, one of them being the certificate to in automotive air conditioning. So if you are a qualified mechanic, um, automotive technician and you want to be able to service automotive air conditioning, then this course enables you to uh, be licensed and to be able to buy the automotive refrigerant. After doing the course, you can apply to Arctic for a refrigerant handling license. And then uh, on having that license, you can then go and buy gas and you can service and repair automotive air conditioning systems. We're also VicRades accredited. Um, so if you are a, an automotive technician that is wanting to do roadworthies as part of your job, uh, part of your work, um, you can come in here and do the uh, VicRades accredited course. 
which enables you to uh, fill out and issue roadworthy certificates for cars. So when the cars are being sold, they need to have a roadworthy usually, and um, doing this course enables you to fill out the roadworthy certificates. Um, there's a, a, another course that we do is the Cert 4 in Transport and Logistics, and that course is for people that are wanting to be driving instructors. So that's um, you know, someone that's working either for themselves or for a business where you would be teaching per people how to drive. Um, so that's another area that we can uh, certainly help you with. Um, we also do engineering welding courses here. So the engineering course at the moment is available to secondary schools only. So it's a vetting schools um, program. It's a certificate to engineering over two years, just like the certificate to in automotive is over two years. Uh, we also run accredited courses for welding. So ISO 9606 is the international standard for welders. And that is available to experienced welders um, that are looking to get that you know, latest international qualification or for people that are maybe uh, they've been working in another area and, and they need to sort of get their skills up uh, to a particular level and, and then be tested. So there's a couple of areas there. We also have short courses in welding. So they're usually done on a Monday night and um, there's an introduction to MIG welding or TIG welding or ARC welding. And that's done over four, four Mondays, over four weeks. Um, and that is a short course, like a hobby type course. If you are interested in uh, welding, you might have a little project that you're doing and you just wanna know how to do basic welding, then this is probably the course for you. It's just a short course, it goes for four weeks, it's on a Monday night. And you can either do MIG welding or arc welding or TIG welding. Now, a lot of the guys and girls have got a little project they wanna do or they wanna do some maintenance around or build, build things out of metal. And this is a course that enables you to learn the techniques in actually being able to fusion weld metal together. Um, how can I get into the industry is, is next. So we can start with a certificate too in automotive service technologies. Um, and that gives you, as I said before, it gives you the, the foundation skills, um, how things work and how to check and service them. Um, you can actually go around, you can look for an employer to help you uh, obtain an apprenticeship. Um, there's apprentice um, networks, there's group training organisations that will help. Box Hill actually has a skills and job centre here that's just located on Elga Road, you can go into. Um, they will help you get in contact with you know, employers that are looking for apprentices or looking for workers. And they can also help you with uh, resumes and um, the paperwork necessary to apply. Now that's sort of that's that's it for us. Um, there is uh, a video that will be played just in a sec on the enrolment process, and then if you'd like to type um, any questions that you have, I'm happy to answer some questions. Um, no doubt there will be some that are coming through. So if you would like to just uh, have a look at the video. Any questions that you have, uh, get them up on the screen and I'll see what I can do to answer the questions um, after the video. Thank you very much. Ready to apply at Box Hill Institute? The first step is to contact us by calling 1300 Box Hill, submitting an inquiry through our website or via live chat. We're here to answer all your questions and ensure we find a course that's right for you. 
We will email you an application pack, which will include a link to start your application. The application will take about 30 minutes to complete and submit. Make sure you have your ID and your proof of residency handy, such as your Medicare card or your passport, as you'll need to upload a photo of this to your application. As part of the application pack, you may be required to complete a language literacy numeracy profile. This is to ensure that you meet the entry requirements into the course and for us to support you in your studies. The profile will take you around 90 minutes and must be completed in one sitting. The other one is a pre-training review document which will ask you questions about your interests, your aspirations, your career goals and your prior study. Once completed, you will need to upload both documents to your online application. Depending on the course that you are applying for, you may be required to submit extra documents such as a subject selection form, a workplace declaration form or an under 18 parent slash guardian consent form. You may also be required to watch an online information session as part of your course. This will be discussed with you when you inquire. Once your application has been submitted, you may be required to attend an interview or an audition remotely. We will contact you if you're required to do this. After this, our team will be in touch to book an appointment to finalise your application. This appointment will be conducted over the phone where we will run you through the pre-training review. This will include timetable information, fees and student support. Once we have finalised your application, we will email you a conditional letter of offer. You'll need to follow the steps to accept your offer online. To finalise your enrolment, you'll need to make payment. There are several ways to do this, such as a payment plan or VET student loan. We look forward to welcoming you to Box Hill Institute. I'm just waiting for some questions to come through. Okay, we do have a couple of questions that I can see now. And what do we have? So is the workshop area only for learning purposes or is it open for external car services as well? No, it is actually, it's, it's only set up for um, learning for the students. It doesn't actually work as a commercial workshop. Um, so, uh, I mean, one of the things that we do encourage is that the students, when they're actually here, they can work on their own cars, um, but you know, not anything for the public to actually come into. So, um, what type of person is best suited to becoming a mechanic? I suppose you've got to have um, some type of mechanical aptitude. So you've got to have uh, uh, you've got to have a you want you've got to want to get your hands into things and learn how things operate. Um, when I was a kid, I was pulling apart lawnmowers and things and wanted to know how the ins and outs of them and all mechanical bits and pieces. So you know, little motorbikes and whipper snippers and uh, lawnmowers, all that sort of stuff. Always playing with those and. You know, you've, I suppose, a, 
a desire to learn how things operate and you know, a desire for cars, really. Um, if you have a love of cars and you, you like um, you're looking at different types of cars and how they're all put together and you, know, you, you look at videos on modifying cars and things and uh, all sorts of things to sort of consider. And I know I just, I like mechanical things. I like pulling things apart. And so I thought that uh, being a mechanic would be a good thing. And it has been very good. Um, certainly had a very good career in, in the automotive industry. And there's a number of different areas you can get in. You don't have to be an automotive technician. There's, there's cooling systems, there's radiators, there's wheels, tires, there's suspension, um, exhaust systems, undercar, uh, the electronic side of things, um, diagnosing, um, modifying, all that sort of stuff. So I um, hope that sort of answers that one. And one of the other questions was, do I need to have a Cert 2 before I do a Cert 3? No, you don't need to have a Cert 2, but it is certainly desirable um, and it does have some advantages in that you can get a whole lot of credits um, for most of the first year of your apprenticeship if you are taken on as a Cert 3 apprentice. Um, you can get quite a few credits um, if you do the Cert 2 and it may shorten the um, it may shorten the duration of the of the course um, depending on the employer. Um, aside from there's another question here aside from a suburban garage what sort of other places can I work at as a mechanic so hundreds of places around Melbourne have got uh, workshops in them um, it doesn't have to be your big Ford dealer or Holden dealer or Mitsubishi Nissan Toyota it doesn't have to be a big place like that uh, Mercedes BMW They've all got their dealership networks around, but there's also a number of other areas, you know, small workshops, uh, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, there's independent workshops, there's franchises, there's a whole lot of chains around, like your, your Kmart uh, Tire and Auto, which is now called Mica. There's you know, your Midas and Ultratune and everything, everything else you can sort of think of. Uh, a lot of other people have gone into business themselves and uh, started up their own little place where they might have a, a small workshop with just a couple of people working there and they just do general repairs. Some people will get into uh, specialising in a particular type of vehicle. So you might love and, and be really into European vehicles and you, you might have done your training on European vehicles. You might have worked at a Mercedes-Benz dealership or BMW or something and then you go out and, and work at an independent uh, or start your own independent um, uh, workshop that specialises in that type of vehicle. So that's another, another way. So it doesn't have to be just your suburban garage. There's a whole lot of places that you can work at. Um, the industry is certainly um, a bit different to what it was many years ago. And you look at people saying, oh, there's no industry anymore. You know, no one's uh, making anything here anymore. All of those vehicles are sold, even though they're not made here anymore. They all still need to be repaired and serviced. And I think um, I think last year's figures were something like 800, 900,000 cars were actually sold um, last year. And not everyone wants to take it back to the dealer to have it repaired. And eventually when that dealer network finishes you know, after three years or wherever it is, then people are looking at uh, taking their vehicle to another place to have it repaired. Maybe not the dealership, and it may be a, um, an independent workshop somewhere. A um, couple of other questions here. Uh, looking to train as a light mechanic. Um, is the logical path going from a cert to light vehicle or other apprenticeship. Um, look, it is, it is an advantage, as I said before, to do a cert two before you do the cert three, but it's not necessary. You can actually go straight into a cert three without having any other qualifications. 
We do offer the certificate two here. Um, it's, a, it's a course that is done over 10 weeks, uh, four days per week. And after that, you do end up with the certificate two qualification. So, and as I said before, it, it does cover all of the inspect and service units and it gives you a real good grounding of, of how things work and um, makes you very employable for you know, looking for an apprenticeship. I'm sure if you're up against someone that uh, didn't have the Cert two and didn't have the experience, then you know, it's, it's one way of getting the edge on, on someone else, but it's not, not necessary. Not absolutely necessary. A um, couple other things. Um, online delivery option. Uh, at the moment, with the situation, um, you see I've got a sticker here. Um, Box Hill Institute's doing everything that we can, and we've got systems in place to ensure that you're safe when you come here. So as you arrive, you actually go through a screening, um, a screening area where we ask you some questions if you've been in contact with um, any anyone with COVID, um, you know, traveling overseas or anything. Um, we get you to sanitize your hands. Um, we get to, we take your temperature to make sure that you're under the 38 degrees and that you're well. And then only after then are you actually allowed on, on site here to do work. At the moment, um, a lot of the work is being done online. So we have uh, an automotive program called CDX and that is all sitting online. So students are able to access CDX from anywhere at any time. Um, and what's been happening over the last few months is we've been able to deliver a, a lot of the content with the theory has been online. Uh, with the students only coming in for the practical side of things. So it minimises the amount of students here on campus at any time, and also enables us to keep our social distancing um, requirements, uh, which can be difficult sometimes, um, but we do have the workshop actually set up with designated practical areas to keep the couple of metres between the, any of the students. So uh, with the Cert two program and with the apprentices at the moment, uh, the first few days of the week are done online um, with a teacher sort of guiding the students through the work online. And then Thursday and Friday is usually quite busy here you know, later in the week where they come in and do the practical to finish off the units. Um, another question here. Just got to read this one, it's a bit longer. Um, it's, it's just a, a question about um, helping, helping a student get into work after finishing the Cert 2. So we do, during the Certificate 2 program, we actually have a number of GTOs or group training organisations in and they usually have a number of employers that are looking for apprentices. So we invite them in, uh, they have a chat with the group and the group is then asked to provide resumes or you know, information about where they'd sort of, where they live, what they'd like to do and they see if they can match them up to work because it's the group training organisation's job to try and find them work um, certainly in their interest. So they're working hard to try and find um, the, the Cert two students and anyone else actually uh, work in the automotive field. And we do have a skills and job centre here. So during the, the 10 weeks um, that the Cert twos are in here, we do have the, apart from the GTOs coming in, the group tra training organisations, we have our skills and job centre that comes over and has a chat to the students. The students um, are guided through you know, how to apply for work, um, resumes, uh, all that sort of stuff, and updating resumes. 
uh, interview techniques, all that sort of thing. So uh, apart from doing the uh, skills required for the job in the Cert 2 itself, looking at cars and how they operate, we are actually helping you try to find work as well. And it's part of the part of the course. Um, another one, what have we got here? Trade recognised certificate as a motor mechanic. Um, there's another couple of things here. Uh, some of these I might actually reply to if you want to give me some details and some phone numbers, I can probably give you a call and uh, talk to you about these other things. There's uh, Jack here was saying that he's got um, a trade recognised as a motor mechanic um, might be a, an international student or something, so I've just got to look into that. But if you want to, so Jack, if you want to send us through a phone number or something, um, happy to give you a call and talk you through that. Um, so I think that's about it for questions that I can see at the moment. And so automotive industry, it's it's not dead, it's alive, it's happening. We're still um, selling lots and lots of cars and they all need to be repaired. Someone needs to repair them. And there is a, a, a real issue with trying to get students uh, into the automotive field at the moment. And there are jobs around. So it's it's very much in demand. Um, certainly work around. You've only got to look at, um, and it's a little bit difficult at this time with COVID, um, but you know, at, at any other time of the year, you look on, on the job boards and things, seek, there's always jobs for automotive apprentices, motor mechanics. Um, uh, there's a lot of work out there. There's still a lot of workshops that are open and, and operating. Um, people still need to have their car serviced. And you know, some have taken advantage of the not driving so much at the moment to actually have their car serviced. Uh, most of the workshops uh, are doing quite well still. Some have experienced some difficulties, but uh, it's, it's how it is at the moment, unfortunately, with COVID until we know what direction we're sort of going with that. Uh, it's a bit hard to say um, what's going to happen, but yeah, the cars are still being sold, even though it's a little bit slower than usual. Uh, they still need to be repaired. It's a great career to get into. And uh, all the guys here will vouch that um, we've all had a great time actually working on vehicles. You know, I've done it since 1987 or something, I think it was. <laughs> over 30 years um, and certainly enjoyed you know, every minute of it really. I had my own business um, not that far up the road from here actually and then decided to get into uh, the teaching and trying to get some of my knowledge into the into the students um, that were wanting to know all about vehicles. So um, thank you for your time um, and again I do invite you into the workshop um, contact myself or um, the 1300 number and that will get through to me and we can certainly organise a tour if you have individual things that you want to find out happy to talk to you about it um, and you international guys we are still running an international program um, and I know that some of you have been stuck overseas at the moment, haven't been able to uh, my board, but um, we're also looking at being able to deliver some of the content online to you. So um, we will see how we go there, uh, but certainly keep it, um, keep it in mind that we're still going. Um, we're having, um, there's a new group of international students is starting actually in the next few weeks. So there's certainly openings there. There's a certificate two group starting in the next couple of weeks, just after the break. So 
Um, now there's another little question here before I finish off, if I can answer. Um, got here. Yeah, so there's a, there's a student here that's actually applied for um, a few jobs at the moment. So it is it is um, difficult at the moment with some places. Um, hopefully the restrictions over the next few weeks will lift again and we'll be all um, back in action again. So only time will tell, but um, thanks for your time. And certainly at any stage, you give us a call, come in, have a look around, um, see if it's for you, ask questions. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.